Terrain. The place where you choose to fight your battles in Total War Warhammer can be your biggest ally or your biggest enemy. Different types of land have different traits that may have a positive or negative effect on your army. Different armies and factions respond differently to different types of land. So it's important to know where you're fighting and why, and to try and use the terrain to your advantage. So let's start with the obvious one, high ground. Everyone knows that high ground is generally a good thing to hold to have an advantage. But what advantages do we actually have in Total War Warhammer? Well the first one that you may or may not know about is that you get a buff to your leadership when you're on the high ground. You can see it says on high ground, 10, meaning that your boys are chuffed that they're above the enemy. And while this does seem like a really useful buff to have, it's actually not that great. Because as soon as you come into contact with the enemy and you end up at the same height as them, then suddenly your leadership bonus is gone. So it's not much use to you during battle, but after a battle or if you want to pull a unit back, it can be useful to get them to high ground to bolster their morale. One type of unit that this is a bit more useful for is missile units. On the high ground, they'll be able to attack and still keep that leadership bonus. However, if they're shooting at a melee troop, they're not really in danger of losing too much morale because they won't be taking any damage. If they're in a skirmish with another missile unit though, this could be quite handy. When moving up high ground, there are two options, walk or run. If you run, you'll get to the enemy quicker and you won't take as much damage from missiles and such, but you will get fatigued. If you walk, you'll have the opposite. More time exposed to danger, but no fatigue. You have to make a judgement call to decide which is best. Sometimes taking more missile damage may be a better idea than arriving to the battle exhausted. You can see here my gore herd are winded, but the enemy are already tired because they ran up the hill. You'll of course get tired quicker running uphill than you will running on flat land, and you'll move slower too. So bear this in mind when attacking up a hill. You can expose more of the map by being on the high ground too. You can see on the little map the more of it becomes visible, the higher and higher I get. If you can't already see the enemy army, high ground should do the trick. If you do attempt to take the high ground, you have to then ask yourself how long can I really stay here? It all comes down to artillery really. If you have the artillery advantage, you can hold the high ground and just keep firing at the enemy. If you don't have the advantage, then they're just going to hammer the crap out of you until you either come down off the hill or till they run out of ammo and then they'll engage you. By which time you'll be beaten down by artillery and you may be not in such good shape. So if your opponent's bought three trebuchets and you've bought one lousy cannon, you may want to abandon the high ground idea straight away. A possible counter if you are at an artillery disadvantage is to use the brow of the hill. Move back into space where the enemy has no line of sight on your troops and you'll see your units like these cavalry here become hidden. So the brow of the hill, if you don't know, is just basically the top of the hill, the point where you can't see what's on the other side of the hill. Get all your troops behind it and they'll become hidden. You can see all these are hidden now, so the artillery won't be able to shoot at them. All these ones that are on the top of the hill still are visible, so they may still get shot at. Brows of hills can be great for ambushes as well, especially if you don't let the enemy see the unit in the first place. These two cavalry units have been hidden for a while, so the enemy's probably forgot about them, and now that they've engaged with my infantry, it sets them up for some easy hammer and anvil. I simply charge out my cavalry and come up behind them before they have time to react. So keep an eye out for blind spots on the map where you can hide a sneaky unit. People will expect hidden units in trees, but not behind hills so much. Which brings me to my next point, the forest. As you're probably aware, trees are great for hiding units in, but they have severe penalties on certain types of units, namely large units. Whether it's monsters, cavalry, or generals on mounts, most large units will take this penalty. If I select these trolls here and then scroll over the forest, you can see that they take minus 80% speed and minus 80% melee attack. This is a huge disadvantage for them. So long story short, don't take your large units into the forest to fight at all. If you're on the other end of the spectrum, you could try luring enemy large units into the forest to fight, giving them that disadvantage. Beastmen large units, however, are one of the exceptions to this rule. They have a no forest penalty, meaning they basically smash their way through the forest and don't get slowed down at all. So if you're playing as the beastmen, throw your monsters into the forest, you've got nothing to worry about. Of course the same applies to elves as well who actually get a buff in the forest. This is why knowing yours and your enemy's faction's strengths and weaknesses is very important. If they suck in the forest, try and make them fight in the forest. If you suck in the forest, stay the fuck out of the forest. Simple. The same sort of idea applies to swamps, but it's no longer large units that are hindered. It's small units, foot units, infantry. You can see these dryads, they take the same penalty as the large units took in the forest. So all these small units on foot are going to take that. The large units have no penalty at all, you see it just says shallow water, minus nothing. 
all these other infantry units that are on foot, even the general himself, will struggle in the water. So you can use this to your tactical advantage and try to lure people into swamps to buy yourself more time to fire at them, set up some cav charges, whatever. So if you've come with a lot of large units and your enemy's gone heavy on the infantry, you can try and use swamps to your advantage. Just like the forest, put the fight where it's most advantageous to you, if you can. Now let's finish on a few examples. Here I'm playing as the Beastmen against the Elves online. The Elves of course get buffs when fighting in the forest, so I don't want to fight them in the forest at all. So I purposely put my army out in the open field where they'd have to fight me with no trees around. And because I have a Saigor, i.e. the artillery advantage, I can force them to come to me, which results in a swift and brutal slaughter. In this one I'm creating a choke point. Think 300. I've taken a narrow pass and I'm going to control it so that the enemy can't get in behind me. I'm playing online and my opponent's army is 80% cavalry. So if I take this fight in the open field, he's going to surround me and just smash me all over the place with his cavalry. If I can create this choke point, this one narrow direction that he can attack me from, I can try and control all his cavalry with all my spear units. My spear units, my anti-large units, are my best weapon against a horde of cavalry. If he tries to come around the flank, I can cover that too. As long as I can hold this main narrow pass, I'll be okay. This left side of the slope actually can't be accessed, so that's where there's no troops there. You can see these cavalry have all just bunched up, and there's little they can do. On the flanks I've got it covered with more anti-large and my missiles, so I've used the terrain to win this battle. Using parts of the map to create advantages as well is also a good way to go. Here I'm using this small hill and the massive hole on my left to protect my left side, meaning I can pay more attention to the rest of the battle. And lastly, small rock formations or cliffs can create a great platform for skirmishers or artillery to fire from. A couple of units on their flanks and they'll be pretty well protected, allowing them plenty of time and freedom to blast off the balls of any incoming mother bitch. So, make use of the deployment phase and scour the map to see who may have a terrain advantage, or look for opportunities where you can take the terrain advantage. Using the terrain correctly can be the difference between winning and losing. Thanks for watching this Total War Tactic, I will see you in the future.